Welcome back. In this video, we will look at the response of the international community to climate change impacts on agriculture. With the adoption of the Paris Agreement, Agenda 2030 and the Sendai Framework on Disaster Risk Reduction, 2015 was a landmark year. Let's hear from Cassie Flynn, UNDP's Global Climate Change Advisor. Adaptation is a key thread throughout many of the global agreements of 2015. Now, if we remember, we have the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. We have the Paris Agreement. We have the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. And we have the Addis Ababa Action Agenda for Financing Sustainable Development. And when you take all of these together, they represent an entirely new opportunity for the world to transform themselves to sustainable development. And adaptation is in every single one of these. Obviously, in the Paris Agreement, adaptation is, is a key part to delivering the goals of the Paris Agreement. And in the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, adaptation is included in the Climate Change Goal, which is goal number 13, but it's also included across all of the other 16 goals. We see it certainly when we talk about protecting food systems. We see it when we talk about building more sustainable infrastructure. We see it when we talk about life below water or life on land. Adaptation is through all of these. Adaptation and increasing resilience is certainly a part of the disaster risk reduction frameworks coming out of Sendai. Um, increasing our resilience to disasters is, is a key part of, of our global response to the impacts of climate change and other hazards. And then in ADIS, the agenda for financing sustainable development, if we're not funding adaptation, then we are missing an incredible opportunity that we have to transform our economies. Now the challenge in this, of course, is how you take all of these global agreements and adaptation being a key part of them, and how do you implement them on the ground? What does that look like? How do you take the best of Paris and the best of the 2030 Agenda, the best of Sendai and the best of Addis and help countries to be able to transform their economies and be more resilient? And this is where NAPS can come in. National Adaptation Plans, because they put together all of the priorities on adaptation and they apply certainly to the Paris Agreement, that can also be a framework for bringing together action on the SDGs, action on Sendai, and action on ADIS. These NAPs can be the foundation by which countries build adaptation action and be as ambitious as possible now and in the future. All of these agreements set specific goals and commitments to reach inclusive and resilient development outcomes in the face of climate change. The momentum and unity of countries to address climate change has been remarkable. And now, with the Paris Agreement's entry into force, the focus has shifted to implementation at the national level. Countries are now looking at how to meet the goals and commitments they have set out, how to identify the needs of different sectors and stakeholders, and how to integrate them into a common actionable strategy. National Adaptation Plans, or NAPs, are a critical tool to making that happen. NAPs specify how countries plan to integrate adaptation into their development planning processes at all national, subnational, and sectoral levels. But what are NAPs, and how did they come about? In 2001, at the seventh session of the Conference of the Parties, or COP7, to the UNFCCC, nations established the National Adaptation Programs of Action, or NAPAs. The thing to remember about the NAPAs is that their main goal was to identify urgent and immediate needs for climate change adaptation in least developed countries. NAPA projects include, for example, protection of coastal areas against sea level rise in Bangladesh, or forecasting system for early warning and climate risks in Benin, or establishment of food banks in Chad. By 2016, all 48 LDCs submitted their NAPAs and 195 projects were underway. To support countries to implement their NAPAs, the least developed countries fund was created. More than $1 billion has been mobilized to the fund. Countries made progress in the NAPA process, but there wasn't anything in place to meet longer-term adaptation needs. In 2010, at COP16, parties to the convention adopted the Cancun Adaptation Framework. They launched a process to formulate and implement NAPs that address medium and long-term adaptation needs. 
The NAPAs have provided a good starting point for adaptation planning in least developed countries. Countries can now build on the lessons learned from the process. For example, um, it was found during NAPAs that engaging national experts in establishing multidisciplinary NAPA teams throughout all stages of the process ensured a smoother and more effective implementation. NAPAs will always serve as an important national policy tool that articulate urgent priority adaptation needs. The NAP, however, is about longer term adaptation planning. Because of this, it is rooted in the country's development planning frameworks and includes all relevant sectors at different levels. It aims to reduce vulnerability to the impacts of climate change, and it aims to facilitate the integration of climate change adaptation into new and existing policies, programs and activities. Let's look at a concrete example of the NAP process in practice. Zipora has something to tell us about the NAP process in Kenya. So a national adaptation plan is a document uh, um, that uh, um, clearly articulates um, the short-term, medium-term and long-term adaptation interventions that a country would like to, to take to tackle climate change. And so um, you find that in, uh, in, in Africa, in majorly Africa, our priority is adaptation. So most of the countries in Africa are basically preparing national adaptation plans. For Kenya, we adopted a sectoral approach whereby we had different sectors, 14 sectors. The transport sector, we had the priority actions in terms of the short term, the medium term and the long term. We did this for each and every sector in the country. We did for livestock, we did for crops, we did for gender, we did for, for transport. But you find that in most countries, the priority, their NAP is just focused on the agricultural sector. As you may be aware, Kenya developed its national climate change response strategy in the year 2010, and this was the first in Africa. And after we, after we developed our climate change response strategy, uh, we, we went the next, uh, the next level. We, we, we went a notch higher to develop an action plan for that strategy. And that's what we call the National Climate Change Action Plan. So the National Climate Change Action Plan for Kenya has seven subcomponents. And in the third subcomponent, that is where we find the National Adaptation Plan. That was quite interesting. I hope that gave you a new perspective on the NAP. We also have examples from Uganda and Zambia, which you can check out in the lecture notes for this week. All right, so to sum up, the NAPs play a key role in reaching the goals of all three agreements, the Development Agenda 2030, the Paris Agreement, and the Sendai Framework. NAPs are a critical tool for countries to meet the adaptation commitments, they build on the existing NAPA processes, and are fully rooted in the country's development planning framework. As before, in the lecture notes, you will find more information, key definitions, and links to additional resources. So, see you next week.